I'm thinking about going into the funeral business. Um, this particular coffin, mate, is like perfect size. I reckon I could squeeze into that. Might need it by the end of this project. That noise you can hear in the background is uh, my router and my uh, scarfing jig and uh, Ed and Deb are here from San Francisco scarfing away out there and I'm bloody happy to hear someone else doing that because that's a bugger of a job. Yeah, g'day guys, welcome back. I think everyone got a little bit excited on our last episode as we installed that large module and uh, saw us fumble our way as we got him in place. Um, this episode's all about getting the underfloor uh, fuel tank organised. I'm, I'm starting to consider what I've got to do here because I can't really go up until I, I get all this stuff in place or at least ordered and uh, and on its way. So I'm going to concentrate the first half of this episode in uh, in that respect. And then I've got my visitors here from the US. Uh, they're sailing around the world at the moment. Ned and uh, Ed and Deb are here to give me a hand to, uh, to put in the bulkhead. So welcome back. Don't forget to subscribe and like and make a comment. Catch you later, guys. All right, so I've got to work out the fuel tank uh, down in this compartment here. So here we go. Okay, so I've got my black water tank here, which is way too small. We're gonna need a lot more than that. And then in here is my fuel tank. Now it looks like last week when we had some rain, we had uh, a little bit of water come into the back of the mould here and I've got a bit of water flow down in the bottom here. So not too happy about that. Uh, but this area here will be our fuel tank. And uh, I've got around two meters to play with here and around 85 centimeters wide. So I've got to find something that's gonna fit in there. There certainly is some commercially available ones, but uh, I've got to make sure I get it to fit pretty good uh, or it's not going to be easy to, to secure and I'm looking at around 270 litres in a survey tested and pressure tested tank. Let's get measuring eh? Uh, the issue I've got here is right down in the bottom here I've got no foam and then I've got foam here so I've got to make sure that I can secure this in place uh, with some blocking and then subsequent strapping and probably stainless steel ties to hold it in place because you know 270 litres is you're looking at you know, close to 300 kilos including the tank very important that it's secured down there in the in the, uh, in the event of movement of the boat now they have baffles in them um, this one this cavity I have here is uh, pretty much exactly two meters long. So I have workable space of 1980 80 millimeters, so 1980. I have a width of 70. around uh, 73 <clears throat> uh, at the base, but the issue I've got too is that right where this fuel tank fits is that it narrows into the skeg. So I've got to make sure that either I sit it above the, uh, the bilge line or it is blocked in correctly or I get it to sit down in the floor. Now I'm thinking probably it might be better to actually have it sitting on a flat platform and have a flat bottomed uh, tank rather than a V bottom tank because of the profile I have here. All right, so I'm back down in the factory after uh, about an hour of measuring up and seeing what will work, what won't work. I'm not really sure exactly how I'm going to fit this tank, but uh, simply I'm finding that I'm not going to be able to find a tank that's going to fit my whole profile. So uh, there will be a sub frame and bulkhead arrangement holding this in place. Now I need to make sure that that is going to be adequate for the 300 odd kilos of uh, fuel and tank and fittings that I'm going to sit on this. So I'm gonna to have to devise some sort of a way to make foam core um, uh, frames that, that fit this with a, with a subfloor. So obviously that's gonna take a bit of working, but for now, I'm going to use this cardboard. I am going to make a complete template of the tank. I need to make one because it's gonna be identical on each side. Obviously I'm pretty lucky like that. Um, and I've come across a company down in Victoria about uh, 12 hours south of me that makes a product and it's called Sant Marine, S-A-N-T Marine, and they make fuel tanks, water tanks, um, black water tanks, and a, a range of fishing accessories, obviously for the recreational fishing market. But the beauty of it is, and this is one of the main reasons why I haven't gone for an aftermarket one from a company from Europe or whatever. Firstly, the freight, I know that I can get it locally. I like to support an Australian 
manufacturer and to have an Australian manufacturer manufacturing fuel tanks for me is critical because if there's any comeback I have a three year warranty on this and the other thing too is that they will make it and pressure test it to an Australian standard that will line up with the Australian maritime safety standard so that that's vital for me uh, that's the sort of thing that I don't want to have to be dealing with an extra piece of, paper, piece of paperwork when I get a certificate of survey uh, pressure test rating and all of the BSP fittings are molded into the actual polyethylene and I used to rotationally mold kayaks so I understand their process so I've come up with this tank and uh, this is this diagram here shows that it's 480 wide 360 high and then it has a V in the bottom so all up it's 405 deep 1865 so it fits well within the margins of where I need to place this tank um, I will have to put some small bulkhead um, fittings in the floor of the boat or in the in the right in the keel line with some limber holes in them obviously it'll allow any water to flow underneath but the great thing about that is that I'll be able to make it nice and strong with a subfloor it'll uh, certainly handle that weight okay so just like when I made the blackwater tank I'm allowing for some tabs here so that uh, I can glue or hot glue this flange, I guess you'd call it, to uh, to the sides and the, and the ends as well. Um, I certainly don't need it on every surface, but I found that this really worked quite well, especially when I went to modify, I was then able to change the tank and still allow for a flange. Okay, so I've finished my, um, Jesus, it looks like a coffin. <laughs> I've just bunged this box together. Now, this is indicative of the fuel tank, but seriously, it looks, it looks like a very cheap cardboard bloody coffin. But I might need it by the end of this job. Okay, I'll admit this has just taken way too long, but it has given me the right shape. I'm just about to close the lid on this uh, pseudo fuel tank. But I think it will save me time and probably a lot of money in the long run if I get this part right. So it's taken me a good hour or so to knock this up and about 20 bucks worth of glue sticks. But at least I've got a shape now and I can sit it in there and see if I can get the the, uh, the framework correct underneath it before the tank even arrives. That'll save me time in the long run. Here it is. <laughs> it's pretty rugged. But it'll do, it is massive. I'm stunned at how big it is. That's 270 litres in volume. So what would that work out about? Probably 60 gallons, perhaps. So I've tried to work out where the strap mounts are and the filler valves, breather valves, and returns are. Um, might have a bit of an issue with this one here. I'm gonna to talk to them and see if I can get them placed up that other end because this particular end here is where I want all of the uh, lines and valves and the like. So. Not sure whether that's possible, might have to run some hoses from down in here and that's going to mean I'm going to need access under the head which is going to be a problem but I'll deal with that when I come to it. Um, pretty much this is the only tank I can get so I'm going to either that or I'll get one custom made. And all right, so I've got all the fuel senders and everything are up this end. Oh, that's gonna be fine. That's perfect, all right. So what I might do, I might leave a little bit of room at each end so I can block it against the bulkhead and that'll stop it from moving. And then the black water tank here. And then the fresh water tank, deciding whether to go for a separate tank or an integrated one into the bulkhead uh, could actually be the bulkhead floor. And uh, in the build here could well be my water tank. Never goes smoothly. Just realised that I'm about that much shorter on this side because of this stair unit. So I might have to change the um, the bulkhead arrangement on this side because of the fuel tank. So yeah, it's never easy.
freaking centimeters. Five centimeters, can you freaking believe it? Wow. What a downer. <laughs> that sucks. That uh, truly, truly sucks because that tank has to go there. There's only one thing for it. This is the only bulkhead I can move. I can physically move this bulkhead. But, uh, I'm going to order the tanks and sort this out a bit later, but that is very, very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Hmm. Okay. Good job I found it though. Before I glass that bulkhead in. That noise you can hear in the background is uh, my router and my uh, scarfing jig and uh, Ed and Deba here from San Francisco that I've shown you uh, just earlier scarfing away out there and I'm bloody happy to hear someone else doing that because that's a bugger of a job. It's a long process and it's very tedious but you know it has to be done, it's just part of building a boat and uh, I'm happy if he's happy to do it, I'm happy to let him do it for sure. We've got Ed working on the scarfing jig here today. Pretty easy. What do you reckon, Ed? I'm just thinking that we'll cut it like halfway through and then we'll cut it again yep. to where it's supposed to be because that way... That way we get a nice they, fine edge. It won't spit the bit out of the bottom of the shank. Yeah, yeah, I think that's holes. a great idea, mate. Yep. I think this guy's right because we've just had a couple of incidences where the bit's been spat and it's dug into my $150 plywood and we're going to do a little bit of planing and restorative work, aren't we, mate? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> a bit later on. So experience counts. It's about the experience here on the mould, isn't it, Deb? Yes, it is. <laughs> Supervisor. Supervisor, yeah, like the foreman down here, sitting in the only piece of shade there is because it's 35 degrees where I'm standing and it's 16 here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it's hard work today. Look at the sweat. Look at the sweat coming off me, John. I oh, know. Look at the sweat, mate. Look I'm watching coffee. Ed work. Watching Ed work. And the sweat's pouring off me. I don't care how he's feeling. It's only how I'm feeling. <laughs> it's hard work, isn't it, Deb? Flat out. Oh, flat out. Exhausting. Exhausting. <laughs> I love watching people work for a change. <laughs> Quite fun. Continuing on with the hottest summer Australia has ever experienced. Look at the shirt on me. I didn't even know until I checked the footage. I mean, I was, it was just feral. The, uh, the sweat and the fair income, the heat inside this tent was just unbearable. So I thought I'll make these guys uh, lift this module a few more times just while we we're trying to rectify the, the, the uh, adjoining flanges and uh, lifted it out. And, and hopefully I've still got some footage of it where I actually grinded the edge of these flanges out to make this thing fit correctly. Your film. Yeah, we, we got to get out his cardboard tanks. He's going to upgrade them to plastic here pretty soon. Sure. So, uh, it's it's so the fuel doesn't help. Yeah, melt the cardboard. And this place is heavy, mate. You're right. I'm okay here. Can we set it up on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. We can have to get it. Yes, it will. I can hold it. Pull that tank out, son. So, like my fuel tank. What do you think of my fuel tank, Dad? I think it's wonderful. It's not going to hold a lot, hold a lot How of come fuel it's though. so small? Problem? <laughs> I have no problem. Ed doesn't like my little tanks. Look at them. It's going to leak. <laughs> we just have to use the sails. It's, yeah, well, the, yeah. Forget the engines. These guys are loving right this. They're just up. winding up an Aussie here. He's winding me up. And I've gone for an off the shelf polyethylene tanks and he's complaining about I reckon I've got a small tank. That's a lot of fuel, brother. <laughs> we'll see there. And, and then those New Zealanders. Oh, come on, say something about a New Zealander, please. Go on, no, say, fish, feel fish, free, just throw got, it out. They have tomato sauce. <laughs> the rest of the world, we got like tomato sauce. We make like spaghetti and you know, whatever you make out of spaghetti sauce. I got to New Zealand, and they, they had a special on tomato sauce. I got, you know, five or six cans of it. I brought it home, <laughs> it's all ketchup. We call it tomato sauce too. 
No, here, here you can go to the store. You can buy tomato ketchup. Sauce. You can yeah. buy ketchup. Tomato sauce. Yeah. And it's like real tomato sauce. Yeah, it is yes. a Kiwi thing. We'll say it out loud. It's a Kiwi thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that for you, I Damien. Them. Fish and chips and six to six. <laughs> Careful, this is going up to building Brewpeg. The guys up there are going to absolutely come down here and burn my factory down. Love New Zealand. Love New Zealand. <laughs> the guys are sitting in amongst the uh, amongst the, the depths of kayaks and crap that I've got in here. They've caught me off guard and found me in a mess. And as Ed said, if it wasn't a messy shop, he'd be worried, wouldn't you, mate? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be worried. <laughs> Go the All Blacks. Oh, stop it. The old Bloody traitor, you're a South African. It's very scientific. <laughs> Boys play with their toys. Yeah. yeah, without making any effort. Yeah. Scarf too much, didn't we? <laughs> that looks good though. No, that's okay, that's perfect. See there, and the best part of the scarf is gonna be gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We, we can't, not like we can turn it over, is it? Oh well, it was good practice though. That's the one I did yesterday. So mine's not much better than yours, mate, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we're, just to, we're just trying to work out our scarf here. Look at those arrows. We are marking it out. Getting ready to trim it down. This is our forward bulkhead. Looking pretty good. All scarfed. Ready for a bit of trimming. Taking up the old driveway. Good stuff. Alright. There's a lot of time spent doing that extra four foot of scarf there, buddy. <laughs> and it was perfect too. It's the best bit of scarf in the whole job. <laughs> We've got to cut it off. <laughs> Beautiful. How's that? Look at that. We can make a boomerang out of that last piece. Sure. <laughs> Have you ever made a boomerang? Yeah. Um, That's how we do it. We scarf it. Oh, yeah. It has a scarfed wing. On yeah. <laughs> you scarf one side and the other side has like a wing tip. <laughs> so you got a scarf on one and that's why it works because that's why it comes back. This guy's has been a workhorse. You right, I got him. You got it? Yeah. Careful you don't go down over that edge, mate. Watch that wind doesn't blow you over the edge. Righto, come on in. Let's keep that scarf. What are we doing here, Ed? We are gluing it together. We're gonna we're gonna tab this thing in place. Um, we're gonna epoxy these, this bulkhead together, but Ed's masking it so that we don't end up contaminating it with epoxy on the outer. Uh, face because that's then going to be sheathed in glass with uh, probably polyester or probably vinyl ester actually I'll get into it um, and that's the plan but it's fitting perfectly we've got these scarfs the scarf is a little bit out we're not going to make any excuses but we've got a 
We've got at least eight to one, but that's what we're after. And I'll just sand that flat once that comes time. This is a really thick epoxy. It's like a, a filler as well, called bond cast. Almost a jelly leaf. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, that's about half of it. That? You can that's about half of that. There's that half. I reckon that'd be probably, that'd be probably enough. So the epoxy is nice because it'll go all the income. And yeah, and it lasts. So. Uh, yeah, this nice. smells like yeah. The, this smells like bad gasoline or something. <laughs> Always does. Always does, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's not that it's not that not that stinky. No, it's right. not like our stuff. It's not like the stuff I use, mate. Ooh. Mate, you should have been in here with my job over. Oh, that's with uh, a little bit of butter on it, right? Yeah, right. Butter it up. Right. Shoot a screw right there. See? Where you have yeah. into that bulkhead? Yeah. Yep. Alright. Put it up there. Alright. Uh, we're, we're almost there. Right there. Yeah. 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 Just the one piece there. Yeah. We're okay. Yeah. Right. Once it is in, just straighten it. Can you get that all straightened up? Yeah. Yeah. Probably took a bit of a chance to have another one there. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. All right. As long as I can get flush against those uprights. Yeah. Um. Oh, anyway. We are. Are we in? There. You say yeah. that. I think I'll just put it on the table. Right. Together with a 4B2 on the other side. Right there? Yeah, bend it down. Uh, the clamp? Yeah. that? Is that going to stick to it or not? That is good. Is that going to stick to the wood? Shouldn't. <laughs> Can you go? No, no, no. Can you just stick no, that? No, because the, uh, the joint. Get that epoxy a little bit Yeah, the joint is actually here. So I'm not. Uh, here you go. Yeah. The width of the teeth. Plus, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, oh, yes. Off the other side. If I go straight through here, we're good, aren't we? Oh, do I need to? Yes. We've got a clamp. Well, there's no way we're going to need to. Yeah, hold on. Let me one in the middle. Yeah, put one in the middle. Right, no, right at the bottom. Right, eh? Right, yeah. Oh, fuck, oh, yeah. Well, push it right. Just hang on. Get, get, go. Shoot it. Hang on. That's not going to be square, that, huh? Uh, let it be able to get it straight. That, that one's just coming out of the phone. Okay, well, kick the, uh, the very bottom forward. On the little mark. There you go, you're, you're screwing it. So how far down? Uh, as, as low as you can get on it. All right. Oh, the 4 is all the way down there, is it? Yes. All right. Here we go. All uh, right, you go up. Cut it. These beautiful scarves here with it. Let's have a look at what Ed and Roscoe have achieved. Look at this. Done our forward bulkhead. Pretty much three quarters of the way across. I think that's a great day's work, mate. Outstanding. Look at that. Shall we remove the masking tape or I'll leave it? I think I'll leave it, I'll just sand it off. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant effort, mate, brilliant. Now you can't get out. You're stuffed. It's okay, I'll still be here tomorrow. He's stuffed. Like oh, the wild man of uh, of the mould. You're a bit knackered, mate. You look a bit hot. No, it's fine. Pretty good? Big yeah. day, eh? Oh.
Right, oh, no. I think it's time. I think that's just about called a day time. I'm knackered. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant, Ed.